The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride, and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Friday, October 21st. And this is the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. So what is happening on this wonderful Friday? We've got current news from around the world, the word study about the Wednesday message, and of course, let's testify with Thule from Australia. All right, everyone, how are you doing today? Yes, Friday has come, and I'm sure all of you are getting ready to enjoy another wonderful weekend. So I hope you guys are looking forward to some fun, relaxation, realizations, new direction through the Sunday message. So let's get things kicked off here together on the Morning Star Drive. Everyone, keep liking and commenting. Let's build this community. This platform is growing more and more. We have more people commenting. We have more people kind of uh, seeing the benefit of having this Morning Star Drive. And I'm really hoping that you guys can give more and more feedback of different things you'd like to hear about. Also, uh, I am super grateful and thankful to this community. Uh, please post your song requests, your questions, your stories, all those things would love to hear about it. All right. So uh, Vancouver right now, I've only got less than a week left here. Uh, but, but it's getting cold. Like it's seriously getting cold in Vancouver. Uh, and actually it's kind of late. It usually gets colder, like near the beginning of the month, but it's already the end of October and things are now starting to get a little bit colder. And, um, like there's good and bad points about getting cold. Number one, the good point is your bed is so nice. Like, isn't it, guys? Like, it's, like, the most comfortable place in a cold, like, when, when you're cold, is in your bed. And then the bad thing about it is, is, like, you don't want to get out of bed because it's kind of cold out. You know, you know, in your room, it's kind of cold. Or and for me, I'm just, like, today, I'm, like, uh, it's too cold. I don't want to go exercise. Even though I exercise indoor, I don't want to get, you know, in, you know, go into the car when it's so cold. And, you know, you're outside. And, like, oh, I got to walk outside just to work out. And I was just, like, I'm going to stay in bed <laughs> I don't know do, most of you guys well how many of you guys are actually in countries that are that cold are you, like I know Malaysia is going to be hot all year round so you guys will never face that it's all air conditioning right but here it's like this this cold the winter is coming in and it is like I don't even want to go outside I really don't I don't want to go outside and my bed is so nice uh I'm even, you know, isn't it the best feeling having a warm bed when it's cold, cold it, like just inside your room, it's cold too? I don't know. I don't know. Write, write a comment what, if you guys have that same feeling. Vancouver, I'm sure anywhere in like um, the northern, southern hemisphere, like near the extremes, you're going to find more people that have colder weather. So I know Korea is getting colder. Uh, probably Japan and uh, I'm not sure about Taiwan, but I know Japan gets cold. Uh, are there any other places that get, well, in the U.S., uh, the, the northern parts of the U.S. will get a little bit colder too, but man, it's so, uh, yeah, I, it's good and bad. And of course, uh, I'm going to say the bad outweighs the good because having a warm bed doesn't really give you much benefit for the rest of the day, right? Because <laughs> you won't get back in there until like another 12 hours later. So either way, uh, but I had a very, very interesting conversation with a friend, uh, talking about Sunseam situation and such. And, um, one of my friends didn't have as much knowledge of what was going on. And as uh, I was explaining the situation to them and talking about it, uh, just the feeling of how serious the situation really is came back to my heart. Like I felt urgency like as it first was. And I realized how much we can't lose that urgency uh, to understand what is happening in this situation. Like one of the things that uh, we were talking about is like, man, we, we never ever thought that this would happen again like we thought it was over no more of this stuff like going back to trial whatever it is like we thought none of this would ever come back again it's done right we've we're finished we've done that we're gonna move on with our lives and we're gonna live in this history but um the thing that i realized is man it's only been like two weeks since we heard that news and i realized just talking about it again and re-feeling that urgency i was like wow it just takes a little bit of time and not talking about the subject and we start to lose that feeling of urgency once again, right? And it is quite sad that sometimes we need something really bad to happen in order for us to come to our senses again, but then you can lose it right away. Uh, like, if you think about 
things that happen in life, sometimes uh, you've heard that cliche that says sometimes something has to be taken away in order for you to realize its value. Like we, we know this cliche, right? But it's even worse when it's being in this history, when it has to do with Sunsim and such. And I, I hope that we will not lose that urgency in our hearts and that pr and the prayers we do every day, two to three times a day, that is something that is constantly going on. And we're going to make sure that we have it deep in our hearts. And I, I think uh, it's this ability we need to have is to understand what is truly happening in Providence, right? And I, I hope that everyone is praying more and more for the situation and not forgetting how urgent it really is. And if you guys want, you know, if you think about it, what do you think their, their end goal is going to be? The end goal for these people are probably going, is probably going to keep Sunsteam in, uh, like, keep Sunsteam in prison for the rest of his natural life. Like, that's probably, that's going to be their goal. Their goal is to keep him there until he dies. And if all these things, like, if the same thing happens like the first trial, this is going to be, uh, the reason why it's going to be a longer sentence is because it'll be repeat offending, right? And that's why it's longer than it was before. And it was 10 years last time. So, yeah, for me, it makes, it makes me, uh, when I think about this, it makes me really nervous. Like, wow, if this doesn't work out, he'll be there for the rest of his life. And, yeah, like, it's only been two weeks since we heard the news, like the situation started. So I, I hope that we don't forget what is happening and we'll pray those two to three times a day, right? Every day, just thinking about this subject. And the one thing that I find really crazy uh, is Sunsteam is probably more worried about us than his own situation. Like that's, you know, look at the, the, the last three weeks of messages. It's all prayer in the word. Please keep the prayer in the word, prayer in the word, prayer in the word. And then you'll never be shaken. And it's all, you know, he's just worried about us. And he's just trying to make sure that we're we're strengthened because of what could possibly happen in the future. Isn't, isn't that so amazing though, that he's probably worried more about us than his own situation, which means it'll be really sad that here he is more worried about us and then we're still more worried about ourselves, right? We can't be those that are forgetting uh, about what Sun seems going through right now. And I hope it's something that all of us can really pray for each and every day, right? Let's not think, oh, like, it, it makes me think about myself over the last two years, like never saw this coming. I never saw it coming. But uh, the last two years, I was more worried about myself, more thinking about myself than than anything else, right? So... Uh, for me, I'm just like, man, we got to get ourselves back into it. Not just praying two to three times a day for Sunsteam's situation, but we need to do well in our own situation too, right? And I, I hope it's something that kind of re, like it re-sparks that urgency once again to pray. And I hope it's something that we can really talk about more often also. Uh, oh, I had another great, like a great conversation also with Danny. You know, Danny Baker over there, uh, Daniel Baker in Korea right now. He does Danny's Money. And everyone, like, you know, it's supposed to be played on Thursday, but it didn't get played again, right? And one of the things that, um, you know, he's he's straight out of high school, right? He's still in high school. He's a senior in high school. So for me, it's kind of like he is not, um, you know, he is still learning about himself, who he is. And, you know, I, I don't really try to pressure him too much. Like, hey, what's, what's going on? Like, I don't even, I rarely even call him about, uh, I rarely even call him about, uh, getting the the po his podcast segment in, and uh, I just got this really mature, responsible response from yesterday because he told me yesterday like, oh, I, I'm so sorry I couldn't get it in, but this is like he's he's uh, he's he's done that to me multiple times before, but this last one was one of the most mature messages I got from him, and um, he basically says, you know what. Uh, I'm really sorry. I'm going to get this done by tomorrow. So he already sent it in to me, but obviously I'm not going to play till next week. But he already sent it in to me, but then he says, you know what? I need to be more responsible. I don't want to keep calling you and saying that I can't, you know, that I forgot or I'm too busy today. I'm going to start doing it earlier now so that I'm not going to be always rushed or like, you know, pressed and then I can't do it. Then I feel bad and I feel guilty once again. So he just left left me this voicemail and I was really like, if if anything else, I'm, I was like super proud of him, right? I'm like, wow, you know, he's 
He's really taking responsibility. He knows what he needs to do. Uh, it, you know, and it didn't take a long time. It just took him a couple of times for him to go through this over and over again. And he realized, you know what? I got to do this better. And uh, I think this is one of the things that uh, I, we really need to uh, help out this younger generation with too. This younger generation, they are a great generation. But, you know, some of them, are, a lot of them are, they're high school. These SS are in high school, which means we just need to give them uh, a little bit of patience. Don't pressure them too much and help them to learn on their own. They'll grow in their own experience. And I really, really, uh, I'm really, really proud of Danny because he kind of like something clicked. And I'm, that's the thing that made me happy. It's like, yes, something clicked. And now he's going to get on top of it even more. So I was super, super happy about that. But I hope it's something that we can also look at when it comes to us taking care of our SS in our churches too. Remember, they're like what? They're like 13 to 17 years old. They're young. They're super young, right? And if we understand that how young these, these kids really are, it means that we have to be those uh, that understand they're, they're still kids. They're still learning. They're still developing. They're still uh, becoming more mature, right? Like in most countries, you have to be 18 or 21 in order to make these like big decisions in life. And I really hope it's something that we can help out these uh, SS so that they can grow into these like very, very strong members that are responsible and they are accountable to themselves too. So I was really, that was one of those, the best messages I received yesterday, and that was from Daniel, so I'm super happy about that. Uh, the poll for introverts and extroverts, uh, still going on right now, over, like, about 60 people have already voted on it, and, uh, we're still at around 55% extroverts, so still hanging around that area. Honestly, I think the number should be, is around 70%, my feeling is, but, you know, who knows, it could, it may only be, um, uh, it may only be, you know, 55, 45, that's possible, right? Which, which is still, uh, oh, sorry, 55% is introverts, not extroverts. Yeah, 55% introverts. But, um, you know, some people are saying, well, Pastor Scott, you can't really use your, um, you can't really use your, uh, the poll as a real thing for all of Providence. And the very interesting thing is, uh, when you go into statistics, I took, like, one of my favorite classes when I went to university was statistics. And they said to get a real, um, to get a valid uh, polling, you need to have, uh, the minimum amount you need is 55 people. That's all you need for, like, to get a generalization is 55. And it really shocked me. It's like, yeah, if you just get a random uh, random uh, polling of 55 people in uh, a certain area or whatever it is, then that is enough for it to be substantial. I was like, oh, wow. So ev uh, even us having 60 is very, very substantial, having this many people that are actually voting in these polls. So that's something... Uh, that's something I found very, very interesting. Uh, oh, new video is going to come out by today. So hopefully today is going to be around 4 p.m. Pacific time in uh, 4 p.m. Pacific time on Thursday, which also means it's like it's like Friday around 7 to 8 a.m. for everyone else in Asia. Right. So a little bit different for you guys, but um, I'm just waiting on the editing, but the editing should be done soon. So I'm super happy about that. And that's going to be about sharpening your sword, how to keep your faith stronger and longer. Right. And, you know, a lot of people, as they move in their faith, for some reason, it gets weaker. They don't do as much as they did before. But, you know, for as a human being, one of the things that should happen is the more you do something, the better you should get at it, right? That, that should be the way it is. But either way, uh, that video should be coming out today. All right. So let's get into some member music from around the world on this relaxing Friday. And it's not going to be too relaxed because we're going to start off with some rock music. We're going to start off with Kuro Black and Julius Miyumo from Australia with Inside My Head. After that, we have Young Say from South Africa with No Gain in Complaining. And then we'll end things off with Rising Japan Radio, RJR with Universe. <laughs> Society's full of zombies and I'm fighting for survival It's just me and the voice inside my head That's my rival It's peaceful in my city but I think I'm going psycho An upside down world where people look down to their idols Yeah, my mind space is like a hellscape I plan on us a crazy place uh, So stay in my own world between reality and insanity The lines of blood And I don't know What's real I'm hot 
the connected, but at the same time disconnected. Convicted in large crowds is when I'm most on my own. Take a peek through the window of my soul. I've kept the fire burning ever since I heard that winter was coming. The coldness of their heart, there's no use running, no escaping. Deep to the bone, it leaves a king shaking in his throne. Yeah. I Well, what? 
And that was RJR. That's Rising Japan Radio with the song Universe. Before that, it was No Gain in Complaining by Young Sif from South Africa. And of course, feature artist of the day, that is Kiro Black and Julius Miyumo from Australia with Inside My Head. Head. All right, so let's get into some news going on around the world. What is the last news we'll hear before we get into the weekend? Uh, as brides of this history, we have a duty and responsibility to take care of this world through prayers, so we need to know what is going on. So three reasons why us, we need to listen to the world news. One, see what we need to report and pray for. Two, see what God is doing. Three, uh, see and comfort God's heart in the terrible things that are also happening in this world. So let's start off with Russia, Ukraine. So under pressure, Putin doubles down with security decree. Vladimir Putin is under growing pressure. His special military operation has not gone according to plan. As a result of the Ukrainian counteroffensive, Russia has been losing territory it had occupied. Meanwhile, Russian regions bordering Ukraine have been coming under sustained shelling. What's more, the Kremlin's announcement last month of partial mobilization sparked widespread alarm in Russian society. President Putin's response, it's not, sorry, I made a huge mistake by invading Ukraine. It is tighter security, not just in occupied Ukraine, but across Russia. So he's doubling down. With the Kremlin decree, Vladimir Putin has imposed martial law in the four Ukrainian regions he claims to have annexed, Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporozhye, and Kurzan regions. It's not clear what difference, if any, that will make there. It certainly won't persuade Ukrainian troops to lay down their weapons. Kyiv is determined to win back lost territory. But the Kremlin leader has also tightened security across Russia with the introduction of three different security levels. In those regions close to the border with Ukraine, such as Belgorod, Bryansk, uh, Krasnodar, and Rostov regions, as well as in annexed Crimea, a medium level of response has been declared. Measures include boosting security and public order. The decree also envisages uh, restrictions on the movement of traffic as well as on entry into and exit from these regions. The next level down is heightened readiness. The, this applies to central and southern regions of Russia, including Moscow. The presidential decree mentions vehicle searches and traffic restrictions as well as tighter public order security. And in a message on social media, Moscow's mayor, Sergei Sobyanin, tried to reassure Muscovites that there will be no measures strict, uh, restricting the normal rhythm of life that remains to be seen. The lowest security level applies to the rest of the country, in effect, northern Russia, Siberia, and the Russian Far East. To carry out President Putin's decree, all regional governors have been ordered to set up operational headquarters. These will include the heads of each region, representatives of the military, and the police. Regional governors have also been ordered to meet the needs of the armed forces of the Russian Federation, other troops and troop formations. This would appear to hand the Russian military greater powers. How will all of this work in practice? It may take some time for that to become apparent. What is clear is that the security system President Putin has put in place can be used by the authorities to restrict freedoms across Russia and mobilize efforts for the special military operation. And if the security situation in Russia deteriorates, there's nothing to prevent regions being upgraded to a higher security level, including martial law. So what does this tell us about the president, uh, Russian president? There's no sign that Putin is seeking an off-ramp in this crisis. What we do see with this decree is a Kremlin leader determined to keep control. Also, Ukrainians are now told to charge everything as power grid hit by Russia. Ukraine's national energy company has urged citizens to charge everything by 7 a.m. local time Thursday because of expected power cuts caused by Russian missile strikes. Energy plants were hit by Russian missiles again on Wednesday, part of a wave of such strikes since October 10th. Outages of up to four hours at a time will affect the whole country on Thursday, grid operator Ukrainergo said. Uh, it comes as Russia declares martial law in areas of Ukraine it has annexed. Heightened security measures have also come into force in Russia, mostly areas along the Ukraine border. In preparation for the blackouts, Ukrainegro, uh, Ukrainergo, uh, has appealed to Ukrainians to stock up with water and ensure they have warm socks and blankets and hugs for family and friends. Phones, power banks, torches, and uh, batteries need to be charged, it urged. On Thursday, President Zelensky said 30% of Ukrainian power stations had been destroyed by Russian airstrikes, and Ukrainergo said there had been more attacks on power facilities in the past 10 days than in the whole preceding period since Russia's invasion on February 24th. 
Uh, Ukraine Ergo said power cuts may occur throughout Ukraine from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and advised citizens to check the regional network operators' websites to see where and when exactly. Sporadic power cuts have already affected parts of the capital, Kyiv, and many of Ukraine's regions. Russian missiles have damaged infrastructure all across Ukraine, including cities like Lviv in the west, a long way from the fighting. Authorities have urged Ukrainians to reduce their power use in the evenings. Western leaders have condemned the infrastructure strikes. So that's kind of what's going on over there in Russia and the Ukraine. Let's move over to uh, the UK. Big news that just came out. The Prime Minister, Liz Trust has resigned after 45 days of leadership. Liz Truss has resigned as Prime Minister after 45 days in office marked by turmoil, triggering the second Tory leadership election in four months. Ms. Truss said her successor would be elected by next week after rebellion by Tory MPs forced her to quit. Boris Johnson is among MPs said to be considering bids, but Chancellor Jeremy Hunt has ruled himself out. Tory MPs revolted against Ms. Truss after a series of U-turns on her economic plan sapped her of authority. In a brief speech outside Downing Street, Ms. Truss said the Conservative Party had elected her on a mandate to cut taxes and boost economic growth. But given the situation, Truss said, I recognize that I cannot deliver the mandate on which I was elected by the Conservative Party. Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer and other opposition parties called for an immediate general election following Ms. Truss's resignation speech. Ms. Truss said she would remain in post until a successor formally takes over as party leader and is appointed prime minister by King Charles. Now, while Mr. Hunt, who was appointed chancellor last week, will not challenge for the leadership, none of the candidates who stood against Ms. Truss in the previous contest have indicated whether they would stand. Sir Graham Brady, the chairman of the 1922 Committee of Backbench Conservative MPs, said it would be possible to conclude a leadership ballot by Friday next week. Uh, he said he expected conservative members to be given a say on who succeeds Ms. Truss, but would set out further details later. But he sidestepped questions about whether one or two candidates would likely would be likely to run, telling reporters the party rules say there will be two candidates unless there is only one candidate. Ms. Truss will become the shortest serving PM in British history when she stands down. Leaders of allied nations thanked Ms. Truss for her cooperation, including U.S. President Joe Biden, French President Emmanuel Macron, who said he wanted stability from the next UK prime minister. Uh, in her speech, Ms. Truss said she entered office at a time of great economic and international instability as war rages in Ukraine and living costs skyrocket. The prime minister said her government delivered on providing support for energy bills and reversing a rise uh, in national insurance, a tax on workers and companies. But Ms. Truss's resignation comes after a period of political and e economic turbulence, which forced her government to ditch tax cuts that sent financial markets into a tailspin. Uh, the Prime Minister sacked a uh, close political ally, Kwasi Kwarteng, as Chancellor and appointed Mr. Hunt as his successor as she attempted to calm the markets. At Prime Minister's uh, questions on Wednesday, Ms. Truss insisted she was a fighter, not a quitter, after Labour's leader asked her why she had not resigned. But more instability followed when Suella Braverman quit as Home Secretary and a vote on fracking fell into disarray with some Tory MPs accused of bullying. Ms. Truss's resignation sets off a scramble to find a successor to lead a deeply divided party, which is lagging behind Labour in the polls after 12 years in power. So uh, that is pretty crazy that it's already 45 days and they're going to have to elect a new prime minister. So that... Uh, yeah, that's prayers go out to UK. They need to find some good leadership over there too. And... Uh, you know, this this world is in chaos and you can see even more. Now, this one's kind of a funny one, but also sad one at the same time. But we're going to go to New Zealand where farmers are protesting the world's first livestock burp tax. So farmyard vehicles disrupted traffic in Wellington, Auckland, Christchurch, and other cities to protest emissions tax. Traveling in convoys of tractors and pickup trucks, farmers in New Zealand have gathered in cities and towns across the country to protest against the government's plans to be the first country in the world to tax emissions from farm animals. Lines of tractors and other farmyard vehicles disrupted uh, traffic in Wellington, Auckland, Christchurch, and other cities on Thursday, with the protesting farmers demanding that the country's center-left government back away from the so-called burp and fart tax. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern 
uh, unveiled plans last week for the world's first levy on agricultural gases and biogenic methane, which mainly comes from burps produced by New Zealand's estimated 6 million cows and 26 million sheep. Uh, Ardern has argued that the tax is needed to slow global, global warming and could even benefit farmers if they can command a higher price for more climate-friendly meat. However, New Zealand's farmers are up in arms with thousands of agricultural workers joining Thursday's protest called We're Not Going to Take It. Uh, Brian McKenzie, co-founder of Groundswell New Zealand, which organized the protest, said the tax threatened the viability of local farmers. While the government hopes the tax will reduce livestock emissions by 20%, McKenzie argues that any reductions will be replaced by less efficient foreign farmers. Methane is less abundant and does not linger as long in the atmosphere as carbon dioxide, but it is a much more potent warming agent. Scientists believe methane is responsible for roughly 30% of the global rise in temperatures despite being a fraction of the greenhouse gas mix. And local farmers uh, told state broadcasters that the level of compliance related to the proposed livestock emissions levy was punitive. A counter-protest was also held in Wellington on Thursday by locals who said the agricultural sector needed to do its part to address climate change. And um, uh, people were told that people said they were tired of subsidizing destructive and polluting agricultural methods and that farmers needed to be part of the solution to climate change by adopting sustainable production methods. Environmentalists also said that farmers needed to adapt. Now, there's one thing about climate change that Sunseem did talk about. He says that even if you wiped out the entire Amazon rainforest, the world would not end and this is not going to be like a climate change thing, right? Like there would be a way that human beings will find a way uh, for things to get better. Okay, now, now, now that doesn't mean that there's no such thing as climate change, but I, the solutions that we have, I think are pretty ridiculous in my favor. Like what I think is because like, um, you know, like in America, they're telling everyone to get an electric car, but technically speaking, electric cars are not really saving the environment, partly because of the, the batteries are made of lead, right? So that's not a good thing. But secondly is because the infrastructure of on the power grid in America, if everyone went electric, it couldn't support all those electric cars. Now, if you want, and then what's we'll like, where does electricity come from? Well, guess what? You're going to have to ruin the environment to bring more energy into the system, which means that even though the cars aren't using gas, uh, they're going to be using more bad energy and more emissions will go into the atmosphere just to power up all those electric cars. So it's not as easy as people think. Right. And it's not, I, honestly, I don't even think it's the number one thing we should be worried about. I don't think so. Yeah. I, there's far more things that we need to worry about besides climate change that are, you know, like, do you think climate change is going to be more important than world hunger? Do you think climate change is going to be like, there's so many other things that um, they did this, they got like a hundred of the most smartest people in the world. Right. And they were told that if we were to give you a trillion dollars, right. So this, there was a, there was a, a, a uh, a symposium, a meeting of like these, the most uh, smartest and intellectual people. And all they're trying to do is look at all the issues in the world. And they're given a trillion dollars. And what would you, and you put in priority what, would, what you would fix first and how much money you'd put into it. And guess what? Climate change wasn't even in the top 100. They said it's something that you can't even touch anyways. It's just, it's far too great, right? That anything you do with a trillion dollars is not going to even make a dent in it. And that's why there was more pressing issues, a hundred, over a hundred more things that were higher than climate change. But it just seems like climate change is like one of these crusades people are having. They think that this is going to change. It, yeah, it for me is, this is just personal, my personal opinion. I don't think it's that high on the priority list. Like all like my, for me, looking at it from a spiritual perspective, all these things happening is not a climate change thing. All these things happening is a judgment thing from God. That's what I feel from looking at Sunstream situation and all the different things happening right now. I don't look at it as a climate change thing. It is definitely a spiritual thing. And a lot of it is God's judgment. And that's why for me, I'm like, yeah, I think we should get away from this, this topic and subject. And this is my, this is my, um, opinion, right? This is what I feel right? From spiritually, physically, whatever it is. I'm not sure what you guys think. Put in the comments below what you guys really feel about like how far, how high should this climate change actually be, right? So there it is. That's the top three news uh, around the world. Some things that you guys can pray about also. Let's get to some sporting news. Major League Baseball, we're in the playoffs and the championship series in the National and American League has begun. 
Uh, game two for San Diego and Philadelphia. San Diego comes back and defeats the Philadelphia Phillies 8-5, to and now the series tied at 1-1. And in the ALCS, Houston wins the first game against the Yankees 4-2, to and they're up in the series 1-0. Uh, let's move into uh, some... NBA basketball. So what's happening in basketball? Uh, as we're, you know, we're moving into the season now. A couple games are already on the slate. Uh, there's so many games going on. I'll just give you a couple of them with some of the good stats. Uh, Detroit beats Orlando 113-109. to 109. The reason I brought up this game is because number one draft pick, Paulo Spanchero, he scores 27 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists in his first game in the NBA. Great job for him. That's a great start for a first round, for the first overall pick. Atlanta defeats Houston 117-107. to 107. DeJounte Murray. Uh, just got traded there last season, or at the end of last season, uh, he gets he leads the team with 20 points, five rebounds, 11 assists. Uh, New Orleans, New Orleans defeats the Brooklyn Nets 130 to 108. Kevin Durant with 32 points. Zion Williamson back in action, 25 points and nine rebounds. Chicago defeats the Miami Heat 116 to 108. Demar Derozan. 37 points, 6 rebounds, 9 assists, and Jimmy Butler with 24 points and 8 rebounds. Uh, the New York, uh, New York Knicks. Uh, defeated by the Memphis Grizzlies, 115-112. to 112, Jean Morant with 34, uh, 34 points, 4 rebounds, 9 assists. Utah defeats Denver, 123-102. to 102. Reigning MVP, uh, Nikola Jokic, 27 points, 4 rebounds, 6 assists. Uh, Phoenix. Phoenix defeats Dallas, 107-105. to 105. Luka Doncic, 35 points, 9 rebounds, 6 assists. And Devin Booker with 28 points, 4 rebounds, and 9 assists. In NHL hockey, only 3 games on the slate. Florida Panthers defeat the Philadelphia Flyers 4-3. Winnipeg defeats the Colorado Avalanche 3-2. And the St. Louis Blues defeat Seattle 4-3. So there it is, guys. That is the top three news in sports and top three news in the world. So you know what that means. It is the Golden Time. And yes, it is the golden time, a time of praise and worship to the Holy Trinity. I hope all of you guys are looking forward to giving glory to God and the Holy Spirit. So what are we going to praise and worship today? We're going to start off with It's So Good, Go Higher and Higher, and then we'll break things down with Masterpiece. So as one body of the Morning Star Drive, let's spend this time giving praise, honor, and glory to the Holy Trinity.
dazzling, led by the Holy Spirit. You are changing in the best way. Look at me. I'm dazzling, led by the word of truth. I know my destiny is changing. Go higher and higher while throwing out my thoughts. Go higher and higher, taking action on His will. Go higher and higher, beyond the limit. That's how I can really truly love myself in the best way. Uh, yeah. Look at you, look at me. Everyone is shining, that's the walls that block you and me with the Lord, we'll break right through them. When we can do no more, the secret is the one more. There are no limits here, we're now with no limit. Don't stop, it just keep going. You change the lot, so gotta keep growing. Started from the bottom, now we're going to the highest. The Lord, He takes me to the Trinity. Rise up all the rest, go high. Changing for the best, go high. Rise up all the rest, go high. Changing for the best, go high. Rise up all the rest, go high.
And what a great song. That is Masterpiece. Before that, Go Higher and Higher, and it's so good. So now that our hearts are made ready and prepared through the time of praise and worship, let's get into today's word study today. And uh, of course, every single Friday, we do go over the Wednesday message. Uh, and this week's message is God is the strength and power, or uh, it's strength of the word and prayer. And I hope that everyone is listening really well to it because it is the ultimate highlight message of the year. And this is one that uh, Pastor Joan has put together. She's in charge of it for now uh, until the situation gets a lot better with Sunseam 2. So I do believe that you will be able to find uh, this message from 2021. I think it's November 10th, 2021. You guys can uh, go check out that message too. And a lot of the, um, there's a lot of excerpts from that message that come into this week's Sunday message. But it's really amazing how even messages from like a year ago are so pertinent to even right now. Like that's how that's how um, that's how amazing the word is. Like the word is truth itself, and you could take a message from last year. You probably take one from five years ago, and you'd be like, "Whoa, that's so deep!" And we're like, "We heard that five years ago, but you just completely forgot it." It's like it's so deep. And I think one of the things that makes it even deeper is say you took a message from even a year ago, like this November tenth, twenty twenty one message. We are different now than we were a year ago. You know, the level is different. The way we think is different. Our experiences we, we go through are different too. And that causes us to react to the exact same word we heard before in a different way, right? And I, it's something that I look at and say, wow, you know, you want to hear more stories about Sunstein going through uh, uh going through uh, like how he fought against the Satans and demons and such. Go ahead, check out that message from November 10th. It's, it's, a, it's a great message. Go ahead, check it. I'm sure a lot of your uh, countries do have uh, the search engines to look at older messages too. Look for November 10th, 2021, I believe. And there you're going to find uh, the, like, uh, the bulk of the message for this week coming from that one there, right? So uh, this week's message is about the strength that comes from uh, the spiritual strength that is more than the physical, right? So everything in life requires strength, no matter what, right? We need calories for our body. The, the calories give us energy, and that energy allows us to do certain things in life, right? So strength is needed for everything, physical, even mental. You know how people get exhausted? Like, I remember, this sounds really funny, but I played Connect Four with someone for like three, four games, and I was mentally exhausted. I didn't want to do anything. It, it's kind of funny, though, because you're just like, what? Connect Four is like, you're so concentrated on something. You're doing very, very little physically, but because you're using so much energy to think, you're using calories in that way, too. But the most important one is definitely going to be the spiritual. We need energy spiritually. And the spirit drives the mind, which drives the body. And the, most, the reason why the spiritual is the most important, because it's forever. We need more strength for the spiritual, right? We can't just think about giving strength for the physical. Because we can see in life, in life, you could be physically fine, but people are unhappy. Physically fine, but people still have mental problems, right? They don't have the mental strength. People are fine, but they feel like life is meaningless, which means they have strength only in one area, which is the physical side, right? Just like a heater needs energy to run and make heat, 
Our spirits, our minds, and our bodies all need energy in in order for it to run, right? So uh, one of the big points that was from the Sunday is in the beginning when God created Adam and Eve, he breathed life into him. And the word in Hebrew is ruach, right? Which is spirit. It also means spirit. It doesn't mean just breath like the regular, like that type of breath. It's talking about uh, the word also represents spirit, right? And he breathed into them that spiritual strength. And I like how uh, Sunsim uh, gives us the description of what is spiritual strength. And it's the strength of your heart, which is more emotional. It's the strength of your thoughts, right? Which go crazy sometimes. And the strength of your mind, which is your soul level, right? And this is the spiritual strength that comes in and it comes out, comes in through the soul and is the heart, thoughts, and minds. And these are the three parts. Uh, if you remember the soul, uh, the soul entity lesson, right? At the very bottom is thoughts, and thoughts happen all the time, right? How do we get thoughts? It is by our sensors, like the sensor, like the the five senses that we have, right? The the taste, touch, feel, taste, touch, taste, touch, hear, see, and what was what the taste, touch, hear, see. And some, I don't even remember what the other fifth one is. That's the five senses. And the sixth sense is supposed to be spiritual, right? But you have your five senses and you are going to unsmell. Sorry about that, right? So you, if you smell pizza, you start thinking about pizza. That's what happened to me last night. Last night, I ordered a pizza with my parents because they're like, what do you want to eat for dinner? And then on the TV, all of a sudden there's a pizza. I'm like, hey, let's have pizza. I'm like, all right. And we went to go get pizza, as crazy as that sounds. But it's happened to us all the time. We see it on TV, it, it it sparks a thought like, oh, I wouldn't mind some pizza right now. And then you go and get it, right? So it's kind of interesting. We ordered a large pizza, me, my mom, my mom, me, my mom, and my dad, we could we we ate half the pizza. When I was younger, full pizza, like a large pizza, I would eat that in one shot by myself. Large pizza, 14-inch pizza, right? I would eat that by myself, no problem, and even more. Now I'm like, I bare I had three slices and that's it. My mom and dad had one slice each. And I'm just like, man, we're full kind of thing, right? But uh, it th- those are where thoughts come from, right? You need strength in your thoughts, right? You need strength to control your thoughts and not to just follow your thoughts, right? So what happens is thoughts come in and then the next level is the heart, which is something that's a little bit more emotional, right? So something can come into your thoughts and it's something that is more like something nostalgic or something that gives you a feeling and it makes you want to do something. And sometimes we get angry and sometimes we get sad and sometimes we get, you know, sometimes we get happy or whatever it is because uh, our hearts uh, are controlling that emotional aspect. And then at the very, very highest level of our soul is the mind. And of course, the mind is the decision we make. So your mind is looking at the nostalgia, the feelings, the emotions inside of our heart and our thoughts of something I want to do or not want to do, like punch someone in the face because I'm so angry, but your mind makes a decision. And you need that spiritual strength in order to control those three things, right? And that's why we really, really, when God came in and gave uh, breath to Adam and Eve, the strength of heart, thoughts, and mind came in, right? That spiritual strength. And we know uh, from this week's message, the most important way, the strongest way that God's strength can enter you is through prayer in the word. And that's why this is the most central word, the highlight message of the year over the past three weeks, prayer and the word. This week's message, of course, is more, you know, not, it's like, it's more reviewing Sunstein's word from the past about prayer and word. But the last two weeks, read those two messages again. Absolute, right? And I I hope it's something that we will really be able to push ourselves towards. Yes, on Monday, I talked a lot about um, Holy Son and Jesus, but, you know, this is something that we're, you know, we're going to learn more and more as we go. We're going to realize as we go too. But for this Wednesday message, I really wanted to focus on prayer and the word. Where does this strength, we need the strength, we need to stand up. Yeah, why does this message come? Because a lot of people are weak. A lot of people lost strength. A lot of people don't want to pray, don't want to listen to the word, don't want to go to service, right? They don't want to wake up in the morning. They don't, right? And what we need to realize is, uh, what we really need to realize is we have to stand up during this time. And like I said at the very beginning, at the, at the opening of the podcast is, remember the situation, how urgent it is. Don't be like the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane who just fall asleep in the most important time. 
Now is the time to pray every day. Pray to the Holy Trinity. Pray, pray to the most fundamental beings of strength that can, that can help you to get back up. What does that mean? It doesn't mean pray for 10 hours. It doesn't mean to pray for one hour. It means just pray. Everyone pray according to how you're doing right now. Don't worry about anything else. Pray every day at 2 p.m., 4 p.m., whatever it is, but pray, right? Spend that time, one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it is, pray, right? Don't, don't, you know, don't think to yourself, like, you know how when it comes to Sunseam situation, I was talking to a friend, like I was telling, telling you, I was talking to a friend. Sometimes we think about, like people are talking about, oh, nuclear war is going to happen, nuclear war is going to happen. But then people start to think too relaxed, like, oh, don't worry, Sunseam's praying about it. But the answer is no, you got to pray about it. We can't, in the same way, don't just think that God's just going to give you strength. Like, all oh, strength is going to come anyways. Don't worry about it. Strength is coming. You need to seek the strength. You need to want to get the strength, right? The way God works, Sunsim says God works like a mirror. So uh, as much as you put in, you get back. If you smile, the mirror smiles back. If you lift your right hand, your right hand lifts up in the mirror too, right? So when you look at this, we're like, oh, so if God is like a mirror, if you need strength, you got to put in strength to get strength. You need to ask for strength to get strength. Don't think strength is just coming. Just because you're a bride, ask for it. Seek it, right? We need to be the ones, when we're living this life right now and in the entire world, this is a chaotic world at this moment. Everything crazy is happening. We need to pray to defeat Satan's, pray to defeat demons, pray to, you know, uh, against temptations, difficulties, fear, confusion, all happening right now, we need to pray. We need to stand up. We need to rise up. We can't be the ones that are always saying, oh, no, no, Sun will pray for me. Oh, Sun is going to pray for me. No, 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 no. We got to stand up. You got to be bold. Stand up. Don't let things shake you. Receive, this, uh, receive strength and the breath of life from God through word and the prayer. Yes, things are happening right now in Providence too. Don't be discouraged. Don't resent, right? Don't resent people. Don't get angry and, and pissed off at each other. Don't focus on the torment that is happening against us. Don't complain about the things that didn't happen the way you thought it would. Go your way. These things are going to happen in life anyways. It's going to happen anyways. Go your way diligently. That's what, and I like that. Diligently go your way. That's, that's, a, that's that, I, I like that sentence that came from this week's Sunday message. Diligently go your way. I mean, it doesn't mean just go. Diligently go. Move on. Get past it. You need to think about God's history. You got to think about what all the things that have already been done, like fulfillment of the purpose of creation, the raptures, or, you know, from those things in history, realize looking at those things, you'll receive strength from that too. Get up. Everyone's got to get up. You know, this is the time where Satan wants us to be down. Satan wants us not to pray for Sunseem situation. Sunseem doesn't, uh, Satan doesn't want us to pray for all the things happening in the world because he loves it right now. This chaos is the best thing for Satan right now. And then when he looks at us and sees all of us weak and not standing up, Satan loves it. And this is why pray. Pray to God for strength. Pray for the Holy Spirit to inspire you. Pray so that you can receive it. Make it better, more brilliant, more pro. There's so much we can do. And this is why all of us, we've got to come together. Yes, we've made a lot of mistakes. Yes, we've done stupid things to each other. Yes, we've all not been in the right condition. But we got to receive God's strength and move forward. Got to, we got to receive it. Realize where you've lost your strength. How do I realize where I lost it? Just listen to the word. Like the last, like last week's message is so awesome. Just telling you how we lost. Where do we lose all of our uh, strength? Right? And we need to realize where we lost our first love. And then we got to take action to regain that once again. It's all through prayer and the word put into action. It may seem like, oh God, it's so hard. But the answer is, guess what? When you lose strength, Everything is hard. Everything is. It's not just prayer in the word. At this time where there's so much chaos, everything is hard. So the question is this. We're tired. We're, a lot of us have lost strength anyways, right? So we, we got to get back up. We can't live like this. 
So if you're going to put some energy in, like, you know, it takes energy to frown too. It takes energy to, you know, to, to tell yourself, I don't want to wake up. Because, you know, how many times have you um, heard the alarm and you sit there fighting with yourself? Come on, get up, get up. That takes energy. If you take energy anyways, you might as well get up. You might as well do the things you're supposed to do. Because if you don't do anything about it, we're not going to gain anything from it. And you're at the end of all this, when everything comes back to normal, you're either going to be worse than you are and you're going to be like, oh, no, uh," and you're going to give up or you're going to be far better than when you were. And let me give you a a stock uh, investor quote. When the market is down is the best time to buy. Why? Because you get everything so cheap. And then once everything goes back up again, you will be filthy rich, right? Which means that people, yes, even though it's so bad, people are still investing money into it because they know that eventually everything is going back up, right? And for us too, we know that in life, there's bad things that happen, but eventually it goes back. Eventually, you go back to the ups and you got to make sure you're prepared. Get Put the energy, invest in yourself right now, the things that are even better and easier to invest in right now and push yourself so that when it goes back up, you're ready for it, okay? So that was uh, the Wednesday message. I real, really realized a lot from it, but I would say my biggest realization I was having during the last two weeks is these messages... When Sun seems saying, get up, stand up. When Sun seems saying, oh, you know, we have to be stronger in prayer. You know, don't, don't lose to the temptation. Remember, Sun Seem is going through it first and giving us a message. Sun Seem, this is Sun Seem's realizations. Can you imagine how difficult it is for him right now? He's trying to get back up. He's praying more. He's doing to get connected more to God because of his situation. And we have to realize it's not Sun Seem just telling us, hey, you get back up. It's him first. This is how he's struggling. This is how he's going through some difficult times. And we have to be those that get back up with him, right? That he's doing it first and we're following. He's not, he's not, think about it. His situation is worse than everyone else in Providence. But he says, now it's time to get back up. He's not saying it just for the sake of, oh, I'm worried about you guys. He's going through it first. He always goes through it first. Okay. So there it is. Uh, that is the word study for today. Hope it's something that you guys enjoyed. Leave a, a comment below if you have anything you want to add to this. Just the words really, really deep. And I, I'm really, really looking forward to next week's message also. Okay. So there it is, guys. That is the word study for today. Hope you guys really enjoyed that, which moves us into uh, the musical Friday. And uh, today, you know, I think I'm going to do a little bit of a change. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play these iconic songs from movies. And in the comments, I want you guys to guess below which iconic movie this song is from. So I'm going to play this song from Huey Lewis and the News called The Power of Love. And I'm sure people who are born in the 70s and 80s will know this better. We'll, We'll get this... Uh, get this um, song and know which movie it comes from more than other people. But this is Huey Lewis in the news with the song, The Power of Love.
And there it is. That is Huey Lewis and the News with The Power of Love. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that song. That's way back in the 80s. But which movie, which iconic movie did that song come from? And uh, a lot of you guys will know the movie. And some of you probably won't because you're too young for it. But go ahead, leave in the comments below if you know which movie that song uh, was famous for. All right? So there it is, guys. That is the song of choice for today. We're going to get into the last segment, not only for today, but for the entire week. And of course, all of us look forward to Let's Testify with Thule from Australia. And today, she is interviewing someone from Canada. This is Karen Smith on her interview. Everyone, please welcome Thule uh, with another episode of Let's Testify. G'day guys, this is Tully and it's the next episode of Let's Testify. This is the place for you to testify about what is going on in your life, what realizations you're having, what answered prayers you've had, and there could be something else you'd like to testify about as well. Recently, a member wrote to me requesting whether we can share what makes us positive these days. We've had the pandemic, we've had lots of lockdowns where people just got so absorbed into media and a lot of overly sti stimulating news and other information. So we probably lost a lot of healthy social connections and interactions, a lot of connection with nature. We haven't been outside so much. So this person thought that we could share. And today, uh, we're going to listen to the testimony from Karen from Canada. It's a short two and a half minute uh, testimony, and it's really powerful and helpful for everyone out there, especially with this week's message, which is God is strength and power. Thank you so much, Karen. Hello, my name is Karen. I'm from um, Vancouver, Canada, and I heard the testimonies on Pastor Guy's podcast, and one thing that... Um, you're mentioning was how can we stay positive during this time when there's many different tribulations or hardships around the world, including the pandemic, including uh, rising gas prices, inflation of food, uh, the Queen's death, and all these different things that are happening. Um, two things for me. One thing that is allowing me to stay really positive is the fact that the word is given to us. And the word is allowing me to really grow and develop my spirit. Um, so I'm not focusing more on the physical body and things of the physical world. I'm more focused on trying to develop my relationship with God. So having that constant and having that grow at this time has been something that's been keeping me positive. Knowing the fact that there are so many negative things around the world, we pray for them. But my focus is on the spiritual. So that's what's been keeping me positive. Very thankful that the word has been given, thankful that we've come to this history to, to know, um, and very thankful that like we're, giving, we're given the word each and every day. So that's something that's been keeping me positive. The second thing that's been allowing me to stay positive is being very active um, in sports and extracurricular activities. So I'm always exercising, always coaching sports, being involved in many sports teams. Despite the pandemic, it is easing up in Canada and Vancouver. So we're allowed to play without a mask now and allowing to have social events and gatherings with my teams. So that's allowing me to stay positive and just being, keeping busy in terms of balance between the physical body and my spiritual growth. So those are the three things that allow me to stay positive. So once again, it's the word. Uh, number two, staying active and having a lot of social activities. And then number three, keeping a balance between the physical and the spiritual. Thank you. That is a really refreshing testimony and a great reminder of keeping the spiritual and physical balance. And next, wrapping up this focus on positivity this week, we've got an easy 30-second technique which is called Notice, Shift, Rewire. It came from an article called The Neuroscience of Breaking Out of Negative Thinking and How to Do It Under 30 Seconds. Your brain is wired to focus on the negative. Here's how to build a new, more positive mindset anytime, anywhere. So that's the article and that's where this uh, technique, 30-second technique, came from. Um, I had never heard of this technique before this member sent it to me, another member sent it to me, but I realized I had been using this technique in a different form um, over the last five years, and I did find it very helpful. So here are the key points, guys. The main 
points that were made in the beginning of the article is that the brain is not fixed. So even though you may be a negative thinker right now, it's not fixed like that. So the brain is more like plastic. You know, your thoughts can be changed with repeated efforts. We can build the habit of shifting out of what we call a negativity bias. Naturally, human beings have a bias towards being negative. The negative things stick to us like Velcro, but our positive experiences, they just slip off us as if they're slipping off Teflon. So we're trying to change our thought habits to more useful mind states like remembering our past wins, celebrating our strengths and seeing life as a series of opportunities and not a series of setbacks and heartbreaks. So there are three key points. The first one is notice your negativity bias. So just start to be aware of your normal human habit to focus on what is negative. You've got to catch yourself at that time when you sl slip into self-doubt or repeated negative thoughts over and over and over again, or anxiety and fear. Just notice when that mind starts spinning out all of the worst case scenarios that can happen to you. The second point is, after you've noticed, what you do is you shift to a moment of gratitude. So the noticing step, that opens up the space for creating new brain pathways. And then the shift allows you to flood this space, this new space that you've got in your brain, with a more productive focus of attention. So it just takes a few seconds of gratitude. This is the most efficient way to shift. So you can think of one thing that you're grateful for right now. It could be your home, your job, your health, family, talents and strengths, or your drive. Now, lastly, after we've noticed that we have this habit of being negative and then shifting into gratitude, the third thing we do is we rewire our brain. And here's where the real work starts. It's what the writer called savoring. And it takes 15 seconds, 15 seconds to stay with this new mindset, to encode it deep into the fabric of your mind. And this is the part where we get ourselves out of the habit of overlooking what is positive. Okay, so we keep in that mindset of gratitude for 15 seconds and that starts to build a new mindset so you can try this once a day every day for a week and see what happens so that's it for today guys so we've shared karen's testimony about keeping the spiritual and physical balance making sure you get out there be physical exercise participate in different types of activities and keep being thankful for the word and also we heard about this new technique called Notice Shift Rewire. Let me know what you think about it. Have you tried it before? Are you going to try it this week? Let me know how it goes in the comments below. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, guys. And it's lovely to be here with you all. Peace. And thank you so much, Tuli, for another wonderful segment of Let's Testify. And big thanks uh, to Karen Smith out there for that wonderful testimony, testimony also. I hope you guys have gained strength from this too. And if you guys have something to testify about, go ahead and reach out to Tuli. Her email is in the description below. All right. So there it is, guys. That is the end of today's Friday podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed it as I have. I hope you guys enjoyed the entire week of podcasts. Everyone, have an amazing and awesome day. And we'll see you guys again tomorrow on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It's the Morning Star Drive 117.8. You saw me up with Sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in the zone, you know. I'm on the Morning Star Drive, you know. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when